welcome back. Aren't you glad we serve a risen Savior? Amen. Thank you so much for being in God's house tonight. Let's stand and turn to hymn 33. Hymn 33. Let's stand and sing Christ the Lord is risen today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. to see all of you. We welcome you. The Bryant family here with us tonight and their family members. We're certainly glad to have them. Uh, honored to have them in our service with us this evening. Uh, and you that are joining us online, we welcome you and thank God for you being a part of it. Uh, thank you for watching, praying, supporting, and ministering to the work. And uh, I, like Brother Blanton, thank God for the great morning we had. Uh, church was packed. We had a lot of visitors, some lost people that were here. Uh, some people that are saved that are not faithful in church, and we always want to encourage them to get in church, get involved, serving the Lord and working for Him. Uh, the music was uh, really, really good, and it always is, but uh, as Andy Griffith said, extra good this morning. And uh, we got a blessing, and it was uh, wonderful, the choir, special music, offertory, prelude, all of it, uh, just great spiritual music, and we're thankful the Lord for that. Uh, looking for a great service again tonight. Well, our ushers come, remind you of a few prayer requests we mentioned this morning. Uh, Brother Joyce, continue to pray for him. Uh, Sister Olson, Brother Olson, they left to go up to UAB for a very important doctor's appointment. Uh, Sister Olson has up there. Uh, my niece, Kim Burnett, been having a lot of health problem. She goes April the 4th for an ultrasound. Uh, Greg Militello needs a, a valve, an open heart procedure Pray for him. He needs to get stronger that the Lord can help and be with him. And uh, Sharp's family, friends of theirs, the Powell family, 
expecting a little baby. They already know the baby's going to have some birth defects. They don't know to what extent. And she's to have a C-section April 4. Powell family, please remember them in prayer. Uh, Sister Adair, uh, still going through a lot of pain with her kidney stone. Remember her in prayer. And then Brother Root, who had his back surgery here a couple of months ago, uh, goes to his surgeon on the second. So just pray for him and remember to uh, hold him up. A lot of sick people, a lot of folks in need, and we as a church family need to pray for them. I don't know about you, when I get sick, I want God's people praying for me. Uh, we get down discouraged, I want the Lord's people praying. And let's pray God will comfort them, God will give them grace, God will give them strength. And as I always say, pray for the caretakers as well, those that are there to take care of them, and pray that God's hand would be upon them. Lord, we rejoice in the fact that we get to be in church again tonight. We thank you, God, for the great service, uh, great crowd, spirit, singing, music. We're honored to uh, be able to see so many people in services this morning and those that watch online. We pray as the word of God has been preached, the seed has been sown. We want to water it tonight that it will bring increase. Be with any lost people that were in the service this morning, that they'd see their need of you. And before this day is over, they'd trust you and believe on you as Savior. And we who are saved, may we rejoice in what a wonderful Savior we have, what a wonderful salvation that we have. Bless the service tonight, and we ask and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, Jesus Christ isn't just a hope, my friend. He is our only hope. He is our living hope. And uh, thank you, son. Thank you, Brother Kent, for playing. Thank you, parents, for raising him in church, loving the Lord, serving the Lord. It's an honor to get to meet him and talk to him. And um, I'm glad the devil doesn't have all our young people. I'm glad God's got people that love him, this next generation coming up. Thank you, son. What a blessing, encouragement. Thank you for using your gifts and talents for our Lord. Of course, Sister Lydia, his teacher, playing, teaching piano, and wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you so much, son. Thank you. What a blessing. Him 34. Him 34. Let's stand and sing, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I'm glad we can sing it tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. church thank you for following me i'm not the easiest person to follow i love you thank you for your music today what a blessing thank you maybe seated and the ladies group is going to come sing this evening thank you for singing ladies thank you.
Thank you, ladies. What a great song. What a great God that we have. He has been faithful, and we love him because he has been faithful. Wonderful offer to our young man. Thank you. And uh, I guess tonight's youth night. So here I am. Amen. <laughs> Catching my second win along the way. But I thank God for young people that are in church serving the Lord. And I appreciate them, and I appreciate their talent and ability. A song sung in church, an offertory prayed, a played in church at the Day of Judgment will be worth more than every worldly song that's ever been played. It'll be more that'll be uh, rewarded by God and His goodness and His grace. So thank you. It's Lydia and Beverly I always appreciate their faithfulness to the Lord. Uh, playing, and of course those playing in our orchestra as well, we're glad for them. Thank God for what He's done, what He's doing, and we pray tonight He'll work in our hearts. Our Bibles tonight to the Gospel of Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Uh, March is a very special spiritual month for my wife and I and our family. Our middle son, Jeff, was saved March 19, 1978. Jeff was called to preach March 21st, 1991. Jerry was saved March 17th, 1981. And uh, he was called to preach March 16th, 1997. And Jerry was ordained in the ministry March 23rd of 2014. My wife and I entered the ministry March 23rd, 1969. So in ending of this month, it starts 55 years, we've had the privilege of serving our dear Lord. And I thank God for every day, every chance, every blessing that the Lord has given to us along the way. He's been a good God, a faithful God, a consistent God. He's, he, he's been the one person who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank Him for what He's done. And tonight I'd like to say a few things that... Uh, we will go along with the ministry, the work, serving God, what it's all about. And I trust that it will be a blessing to your heart. In Luke chapter 18, we come across a very familiar story that leads down through these verses and begins in verse 18 with the story of the rich young ruler. And this story kind of creates an idea or an impression in the hearts of the disciples and a question is asked, and the Lord answers that question. In Luke 18 and verse 18, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, serve one, and that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. Now, for whatever he was, Jesus did not rebuke him. I'm going to say he was a very moral young man. If he kept all those commandments, he did a great thing. And the Bible said in verse 22, Jesus heard these things. He said unto him, yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. I always like to pause there and say, riches do not guarantee happiness. He had very much riches. He was very rich, but he went away sorrowful. When Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter to the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through a, a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. They that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with man are possible with God. May I say it's not just the rich man, but every man. None of us can save ourselves. It is impossible for us to be saved apart from the saving grace of God. But thank God, with God, all things are possible. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. 
And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. And you notice in that verse, he promises a reward that is given in the present time and in the world to come life everlasting. I want to talk to you tonight on this thought, what is its own reward? What is its own reward? Father, we thank you tonight for the wonderful music that we have heard the musicians that played, the offertory, the singing, all that was done. We thank you for it. Speak into our heart, blessing our souls. We love the songs of Zion. We love the hymns from this old great hymn book. We love the opportunity that we have to worship you in song. So help us tonight as we open the pages of the precious Word of God. May we see what is its own reward. May we see what is important and rewarding in this life. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a Bible doctrine and a Bible truth that God will one day reward His own people. Those who have been faithful, those who have been suffering and serving, soul winning, those who have loved His appearing will be rewarded. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, every man shall receive his own reward according as he has labored. And he says later on, if any man's work shall abide the fire, he shall receive a reward. I believe one day there will be a day when God's people will be rewarded for the work that they have done. And I want you to know something. God recognizes everything done for Jesus Christ. God remembers it and records it, and one day he'll open the book and we'll be rewarded for that. I believe in that day there will be those who receive more rewards than others, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. And I believe the Bible also teaches that there are no rewards given out until the judgment seat of Christ. When we read our Bibles, we realize the next great event is the rapture or the second coming. Thank God Jesus is coming back again. After the rapture will be seven years of tribulation, and after that, the second advent. We will come back with white robes, the righteousness that is there. While the tribulation is going on on earth, the judgment seat of Christ will be taking place in heaven. No rewards will be given out to that day. Somebody would say, why? Think of Dwight L. Moody. Think of the great life and the ministry that he had. Think about what happened to him. He got eternal life, but he has not got his full reward as yet. You say, why would you say that? Because his ministry is still going on. Preachers still read his sermons. People get called under those messages. Ministries have been built. Service is being done. Soul winning is being done. One day our life will end. But there will be something that outlives our life. It will be the influence of our life, the impact of our life, and the impression of our life. That great chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, talks to us about Abel. He offered a more excellent sacrifice. He attained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And it said, by it, he being dead, yet speaketh today. His life ended, but his influence and impact did not end. We still read of Abel. We still read of that excellent sacrifice and we still read of God honoring him. Revelation says, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. There will be a day of recognizing those servants of the Lord. There will be a day when rewards will be given. 
The Bible speaks about an incorruptible crown, a crown of righteousness, a crown of rejoicing, a crown of life, and a crown of glory that will be given. But those rewards will not be given until the judgment seat of Christ because the influence and the impact of our life goes on after that. We say people and hear people say some things, and it's not always correct. They say, well, this person went to their reward. No, they did not go to their reward. Heaven is not a reward that you earn or gain. Heaven is the gift of salvation given to us by our Lord and Savior, Him. The thought today is some things that are rewards in and of their self. What is its own reward? In verse 30, it said, you'll be rewarded in this present time. I want to talk about some rewards in this time, today, and in this life we live. Three thoughts on what is its own reward, or what are some things that are rewards in and of their self. Number one, giving is a reward in itself. Giving is a reward in itself. This present time, this day, and this life. Someone said, well, I give a lot to God, so I know I'm going to get a lot back from God. That's kind of this new teaching, preaching, philosophy on the, the radio and television that you give so you can get you name it, claim it, get right, and you'll get rich. That is not found in the Bible. But some of those preachers never knew what's in the Bible anyway, so it doesn't really matter what goes on in their life. Yes, God will reward your giving. But I want to say this. If He never gives us a dime more than we gave Him, giving is a reward in itself. We get to give something to God that is used by God to help other people to see souls saved and carry on the work of the Lord. We have a part in God's program, in God's purpose, and His plan for this day in which we live. Don't misunderstand me. When you give, God will give back to you. May I say, he always gives back more than we gave to him. You cannot outgive God. You cannot give more to him than he gives to you. Every day that we live, God gives to us our house, our car, our job, our money, our food, every breath of air, every bite of food, every blessing. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father above. Seek ye the kingdom, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to say he has given me blessing on top of blessing. I want to say he has given me blessing after blessing. I want to say he has given me blessing beyond blessing that I could ever imagine. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, wherewithal it shall be measured to you again. But if God doesn't give us more, if he doesn't give us what we think, he's a good God that lets us have the privilege of giving, and giving is a reward in itself. In Acts, it says, you remember the words of our Lord, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The reward of knowing we can give something to God. We can give something to God that is used for His kingdom, that is used for His honor, and is used for His glory. A man sat in the pastor's office one day as they talked and fellowship. He said, Pastor, I want to thank you for everything that you've taught me, Sunday school and preaching, all the Bible, all the lessons, all the doctrines that are there. But he said, one of the greatest things you taught me is the how to be a giver, how to give things to God that are there. Men and women, if we never learn how to give, 
you're going to miss one of the greatest blessings, the greatest joy, and the greatest reward that you'll ever see in your life. You'll never outgive God. God will always give you more. But well, we've got to move when it comes to giving from I have to to I need to to I want to to finally where I get to and I love to. A lot of people give because they have to. A lot of people give because they feel they need to. A lot of people give because I want to, I get to, but we ought to get to the point where I say, I love to give. Now understand, I, it's your tithe. I believe you ought to tithe. You'll never come to a church that says less about tithing than this church. And I, I believe you ought to give that tithe as a beginning time. But you have more than your tithe. You have more than your money. Give of your time to God and His service. Give of your talent. These young people that played the offertory and singing tonight, give of your talent for the glory of God. Give of your treasures to Him. Give of those things in life. Your tithe, your time, your talent, your truth, your treasures that are there in life. Thank God for the privilege of giving. David Livingston, that great missionary, said this, People talk of the sacrifice I have made by spending so much of my life in Africa. Can that be called a sacrifice which is simply a small part paid back to the greatest giver there ever was in God? I owe a debt to God that I can never repay. Is that a sacrifice which brings its own reward? healthy activity, the conscious of doing good, peace of mind, and a bright hope of a glorious hereafter. Away with such a word, a view, and such a thought. Emphatically, no sacrifice that it is. Rather, it is a joy. It is a blessing. It is an opportunity to give back to the one who gave so much to me. And he said of that we ought to think and not talk about sacrifice. He made the greatest sacrifice for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Giving is its own reward. Give of your time, give of your time, your talent, your truth, and your treasure. Learn to move from I have to, to I need to, to I want to, to I get to, and I love to give to God. Martin Luther said, I've held many things in my hands and lost them. But what I put in God's hands, I still possess. He said, I've held a lot of things in life that I possessed and lost them, but what I put in God's hand, I still possess. An English nobleman on his deathbed said this, What I spent, I had. What I kept, I lost. And what I gave, I still have for not only time, but all eternity as well. Giving. Giving is a reward in itself. Learn to be a giver. Learn to give to God. Learn to give yourself and all that you have. But I want to say this also. Doing right is a reward in itself. Doing what is right is a reward. How many are saved tonight? Say amen. amen. Now that we are saved, think about it. We get a chance to do right. We get a chance to live right. We get a chance to be right with our dear Lord. Paul in the book of Romans, in that doctrinal book, in those chapters, in Romans 6, 7, and 8, talks about the path of victorious living for the Lord. And he talks about those things that are there. And he says that we are to know that Christ, uh, that we're crucified with him. We are to reckon this truth is so and yield ourselves to him. Paul said we're to know that we are dead in Christ, but we are dead to ourselves, but alive to Christ. We should reckon this truth that we are a new man, a new person in the Lord, and yield ourselves to him. We should yield our lives as instruments of righteousness, as servants of righteousness and servants of the true God. 
when we got saved and serving God, we get a chance to do right, to live right and be right, and it is a great reward. Sin doesn't have to rule and reign, and it doesn't have to run your life. Thank God we can be ruled by righteousness. Our life can be reigned by righteousness. We can, we can run our life for the righteousness of God and serving Him. Doing right is a reward in itself. Doing right is rewarding. It is a payment. It is a premium. It is a prize in itself. Do you remember when you first got saved? Remember back years ago when you first got saved? You woke up Sunday morning, you know what you said? I get to go to church. Remember that day? You'd open your Bible. I get to read my Bible. I get to pray. I get to pass out tracts. I get to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. Isn't that a reward? Isn't that a reward this time, this life, today, that doing what is right is a great reward in itself? What a joy, what a blessing, what an opportunity is to work for the Lord. My wife and I started in the ministry many years ago, church in Ohio that's still going today, thank God for it, bigger and better and greater than it ever was before. Uh, we were young in the things that we did, but we were, we, were, we were so excited to be able to serve God. I worked a full-time job for nearly three years while we were there in the ministry, we lived in Lebanon, Ohio, to drive to Dayton, Ohio, an hour or more every day. So my days and my wife's days were 10, 11 hours a day. But I didn't mind it at all because I got to go to church and I got to try to pastor these people. We mowed the grass. We ran the vacuum cleaner. Dad said, you, you, you'll be big one day. You'll be running things. I figured out uh, I am running that vacuum cleaner. We cleaned the toilets, took care of the nursery and did all of that. Did you mind it? No, I wanted to do anything and everything I could for the Lord. And I want you to know that doing right is rewarding in itself. I got to do something for God, not as much as somebody else. I got to live for God. I got to serve God. I got to be a part of the greatest ministry and the greatest work and the greatest mission the world has ever seen, serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Doing right is rewarding. It is a payment. It is a premium. It is a prize. Doing right is a reward. It is a blessing. It is a benefit, and it is a bounty. We have a chance to do something that is good, to do something that is right, and to honor God. Doing right is a reward. It is fulfilling. It is fruitful, and it is something that is feeling. You said, yes, it is feeling. It is a wonderful feeling to have a sense of satisfaction that we get to do something for God. Amen. Doing right is that. It is a sweetness. It is a soulful rejoicing. I remember the first soul I ever won to Jesus Christ. The first young man I ever led to the Lord. Catcher on our ball team. His name was Bubba. That was in Ohio, but that's a pretty bold name for somebody in Ohio. I led him to the Lord, witnessed to him on a street corner, coming home from ball game, knelt down and prayed. I remember the first sermon I ever preached in a nursing home. I thought, I get to preach. I get to, I get to go there. I remember the first church that we ever pastored. I remember the time that we had, to, had the opportunity to work in the city mission and in the jail and the work that was there. You see, when I got saved and my mom and dad got saved, as Brother Leroy Wright said, we got churchy. Yeah. We went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, every night of revival, everything they ever had. We were involved in the bus ministry. It's amazing. It's hard to believe today. I was driving a bus for church when I was 16 years old. Now, they didn't know nothing about chauffeur's license then. Thank God for that. And uh, I tell you, you talk about a merciful God. I drove a bus for vacation Bible school. Some of the rowdiest, loudest people you've ever seen. We had a big church, a couple thousand people. The pastor really had a, like a little carnival thing there every year. Rides and that was there. But you know what? Thank God for what he's done. 
I was at a camp meeting many years ago, and I went to that camp meeting every year. And in going to that camp meeting, a pastor from another church in the area had a Christian school. So he lent the Christian school out in the morning. Well, naturally, all the boys were thrilled. Hey, we don't get to go. We're not to go to school today. Uh, the girls were not quite as happy, but anyway, they came. And I always sit on the front row if I'm a preacher in a camp meeting. I come up there and sit. And uh, every day there's about four or five young boys that sit there. And as I went to that meeting for several years, four or five, I don't remember how many, those boys grew up from teenagers and on into uh, their years as young men and young adults that were there. And the last year that I was there in that meeting, after the close of the meeting, all five of those boys said, I'd like to talk to you, Brother Jim. I said, sure. We kind of met over on the side. Each one of them said, thank you for preaching the truth. Thank you for loving God. Thank you for being consistent in your life. Thank you for encouraging us to love God, to live for God, and to serve God. All five of those boys looked at me and said, we'll never forget what God did in your life. I went back to my motel room, fell on my face before God, and I said, Lord, what a great reward it is to know you had an influence and an impact on somebody else's life. Giving is a reward in itself. Doing right is a reward in itself. May I say as I close, serving is a reward in itself. The Bible says in this text about the disciples that were there, and he said, no man that's forsaken these things and served me will go without a reward in this life and in the life to come. The Bible tells us in the, uh, one of the other gospels that one day the Lord will reward these people by saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Service is a reward in itself. Now, I know there'll be rewards in the future. I know God will have a day of reckoning when the records are open. He'll remember and recognize those. And we maybe look forward to getting something there. But if there are no rewards in the future, it is rewarding to serve God in this life, to see Him work, to see Him minister. We had two of our military back this morning. We had three of them saved a few weeks ago. Those two didn't even come to the servicemen center. They just came out on their own. Now, isn't that a blessing? That's a reward in and of itself, serving God in this life and living for Him is a great reward. My wife and I in the ministry for some 55 years now, let me say, we have no complaints we have no bone to pick, no ax to grind, and no saddle to ride. We're not looking for a place to get out. We're looking for a place to get farther in. And I want to say that I thank God for the privilege of serving. Serving is a reward in itself. We can have service that is humble, not to brag or to boast or to tell others. Matthew 6 in the Sermon on the Mount, the scribes and the Pharisees, you know what he said? You pray and do your alms to be seen of men. You know what he said? When men see you and recognize you, ye have your reward. That's their reward. I don't want man's reward. I want God's reward. It's a service that is humble. It is a service that is honest. No ulterior motives. No secret agenda, no self-advantage, just serving Him. Service is a spiritual exercise that builds our muscles in life. Service that is humble, service that is honest, and service that is heartfelt. Jesus said, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, Go with him twain. What is its own reward? Giving, doing right, and serving. I'd ask us tonight, could we do more for the Lord? 
Could we do some bigger and better things? A lot of people say, well, if I had more money, I could do something. If I had more talent and more time, I could do something. We don't want to say that. We need to learn from the weightlifter how he gains in his life. He does not wait for more strength to lift more weight. He lifts more weight to get more strength. The weightlifter lifts weight beyond his capacity and development. We don't wait to get more strength for praying. We pray to get more strength. We don't get effective in witnessing by waiting and hoping. We witness and become more efficient as we do it. We are giving by faith, and the Lord increases our faith to do more for Him. We end up getting more in order to do more and to give more. Tom Malone said, God does not always call the fit, but He always fits those whom He calls. God does not always call the fit or the fittest, but He fits those in whom He had to call. I picked up an article many years ago, and the title was, Well Done, Now Good and Faithful Servant. It talked of a man named Paul Mansfield, who was a medical doctor, actually graduated from medical school with honors. His professors said that he was going to be one of the great doctors in America. He had all the talent, all the ability, all the training. But Dr. Mansfield was a Christian man. He had committed himself to God in an early age, and now he realized he had something that could help many people. He resolved to serve God and go where he was most needed. He was offered partnerships and big offices, physicians, established people, offered him great incomes, but he turned them down. He went to a village in the Appalachian Mountains. He was the only doctor for 50 miles around, and the nearest hospital was 50 miles away. His office was upstairs over the town's only little store that was there. For 40 years, he ministered to the poor. He delivered babies, took out tonsils, set broken limbs, sutured cuts. When hospitalization was necessary, he sent them to a hospital 50 miles away. He helped the aged, comforted the incurable, sat beside and tended those that were dying. His patients were very poor but he never turned one away. A flu epidemic struck. He went night and day giving shots to others and got so weak, he got the flu. He succumbed to it, and he passed away. <laughs> his last act was to call his nurse in and said, bring my books. She kept books of the patients, what their treatment was, what their bill was. <laughs> he took a pen and wrote on the book, paid in full said, let my patients know they don't owe me anything. I owe them everything for letting me be their doctor. Great numbers of mountain folk filled this man's funeral, the funeral where he was at. They sang, there's a land fairer than day. After the funeral, Paul Mansfield, they put on the sign on his door, absent from the body and present with the Lord. The theme of the text for that message was well done, good and faithful servant. Servant of God, well done. The glorious warfare is past. The battle is fought, the race is run, and thou art crowned at last. There'll be a judgment seat of Christ where rewards will be given out in the world to come. But may I say there can be rewards in this time, this life, and today. Giving is a reward in and of itself. Doing right is a reward in and of itself. And serving God is a reward in and of itself. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Stand together if you would with me tonight.
And the musicians come and prepare to play whatever offertory they've chosen. I challenge you tonight to think about the reward in this present time. The reward that is definitely a prize. The reward that is a blessing and is fulfilling. Giving. Doing right. And serving. Serving humbly. Serving honestly. And serving heartfeltly is a great reward in itself. Yes, we serve the Lord in hopes that one day we might get a reward. But you can live a life that is rewarding in and of itself. Are you a giver? Do you give of your time, your talents, your truth to a lost and dying world? Do you do right? Do you live right? Do you serve God in a right and a great way? Doing right is a prize. It is a precious premium. Doing right is a blessing and a benefit and a bounty. It is fulfilling. It is fruitful. We know that it brings a feeling of a sense of satisfaction, sweetness and to our soul. May I say, serving is a reward in itself. The Lord's looking for servants that will follow Him. If there were no rewards in heaven, serving God in this life has many great, wonderful, valuable rewards that we can have. Let's serve Him humbly. Let's serve Him honestly and heartfeltly tonight. God spoke to your heart. You come. Some at the altar pray it. Pray there where you're at. What a reward it is to give to God our time, our talents, our truth, and our testimony. The treasures He's given to us are not ours to own, but they're to pass on to others. What a reward to do right. Now that we're saved, we get a chance to be right, to do right, and to give a right life to our Lord. Serving Him has its own rewards. I'm not changed the life that I've lived for God. No regrets, no remorse, and no retreat. Thank God for the life that we've had in trying to serve Him. Rewarding when you see the souls that are saved. Rewarding when you see the lives that are changed. Rewarding when you see people that are in the ministry today serving God. Rewarding to see the hand of God, the blessings of God, the presence of God, the power of God in our life. What is its own reward in itself, of itself, and by itself? God spoke to you, come and pray. You kneel and tell the Lord about it. They're playing. Would you come? Would you talk to the Lord? Your life to be lived for Him, your life to serve Him, and your life. God speaking to you, you come. You pray for these that are at this altar. Pray that God will show us where the true rewards and the true riches are in our life. To see them and to know them and to be a part of them tonight. Take our songbooks and turn to where they're playing. I 
believe it is 315, is that right? 315 in our songbook tonight. Let's sing this not only as a praise to God, but as a prayer. 315, take my life, let it be. Tonight, Lord, take these feeble, fumbling, and frail words of your servant and speak to our hearts tonight. And may we see that in this present time, there's great reward in this present day in which we live. Learning how to give is a great reward. Doing right is a great reward. Lord, I want to say serving you is a great reward. Thank you for the miles, the years, the opportunity. May we realize how blessed we are and how we can have reward, spiritual, soul-satisfying, sweet reward in our life by giving, doing right, and serving you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming. Thank Bryant family and you coming. We appreciate you being in our service tonight, uh, honoring us with you being here, and we appreciate uh, you being in our service. Uh, Wednesday night, we'll have our business meeting after our regular prayer meeting. Thursday, nursing home visitation. Saturday, door-to-door -door visitation. Remember that. Next Sunday evening, we will be having... Uh, Brother and Sister Rogers will be coming, playing the piano and singing. Uh, gifted, talented, wonderful people. Uh, they'll be singing. He'll be bringing a message. So next Sunday night, plan on coming. Uh, they'll be there. Uh, his wife graduated from Hiles Anderson years ago. Uh, his wife and her sister used to play the piano at Hiles Anderson for their big camp, their uh, Bible conferences and their preachers' meetings that they had. Great talent. And uh, Sister Rogers' dad pastors out in Washington, pastors a great church out there, uh, wonderful servants of our dear Lord. Now we're going to have communion in just a minute, so if you would like to stay, you're more than welcome to stay and be a part of that. Uh, we ask that you uh, talk to your children, make sure that they understand. So we'll dismiss for about a minute, and you can go ahead and leave if you need to leave or need to go. 
And if you're going to stay, stay. And if our ushers will come up on the uh, front row, those men that are going to be serving our communion, if you'll come, and after a short break, we will be observing the Lord's Supper. You can be seated uh, while they're coming to prepare.